Hi, welcome to Home 2.0. I'm Sean Jacobson and today we're going to review solar design and the 120% rule. This rule references code NEC 690.64B2. Now this is a really important code for us solar designers looking at designing a system to maximize solar production on residential and commercial homes. This is a limiting factor. It basically will give us the top threshold of how big of a solar system we can uh, size uh, without going to other methodologies that are more intensive and expensive. So what I'll be doing is keeping this simple. There's obviously more information uh, that, and resources available which we'll make available on our website. But for now, we're going to do a little explanation. And I'd like to begin with the utility lines. So from the utility on a home, you have two lines coming in, line one and line two, as well as a neutral. Those lines go through the meter. That meter spins. If you don't have solar, it spins forward and you get charged based on how much power you consume. After that meter goes, after the, the wires go through the meter, the wires then go to your 200 amp main service disconnect. Some homes have 100 amp, 125, and some might have 400 or more, depending on the size of the home. This is a 200 amp main breaker. And what that means is that breaker will not allow more than 200 amps to enter into the electric panel before it trips. And what the 120% rule states is that after this breaker, there's a bus bar. And that bus bar has a rating. Generally, if the breaker has a 200 amp main breaker uh, located on it, on the panel, generally that bus bar is 200 amps as well. Usually the label will state the bus bar rating, which I encourage anyone looking into further understanding this to uh, look at a couple electric panels and find the bus bar rating. Now, assuming that this bus bar rating is 200 as well, meaning that bus bar wasn't designed to have more than 200 amps feeding through it. In normal circumstances, this would be protected by the breaker, the main breaker, uh, normal being no solar or other renewable energy devices attached to this, this panel. Now, when you have a solar system installed, there's another code that states you have to install it on the opposite end of the bus bar from the main breaker. So here's your solar breaker. It's connected to the inverter and the solar panels. Inverter inverting it to 240 AC. Solar coming in a DC high voltage. So we have a breaker. And the 120% rule essentially limits how big of a, a solar system we can install. So what it is, very simply, is 200 times 1.2 equals 240. 240 minus 200 amps equals 40 amps. The 120% rule states that you can't have more than 20% more of the bus bar capacity loaded with solar. So that means we have a max, max amps of the solar is 40 amps on that breaker. Now what does that equate to? How big of a solar system? Well, I've listed this out. The max system size we can put on here uh, from the inverter is a 7700 watt inverter uh, that inverter on the spec sheet has a max output current of 32 amps. Overcurrent protection still applies to solar. So we have 32 amps times 1.25 equals 40 amps. The largest system you can install on a 200 amp main service panel. So some might say, well, that's not true. I've, I've installed, I've seen larger systems out there, or there must be some other way. And there are, there's quite a few other ways uh, to work with it. But this is the simplest explanation of how the 120% rule limits the system size of solar 
um, for a 200 amp main service panel. Now let's say you wanted to add a larger system. Let's say you wanted to add um, 60 amps of solar to this main panel. We're 20 amps over capacity, right? We're 260. 260 amps could potentially hit this main bus bar, causing a fire, which is why the code exists. So what we can do is we can actually do what's called a D-rate of the main panel, so of the main breaker. So we take that 200 amp out. We look for a 180 amp breaker. And now that bus bar can never have more than 240 amps at one time. 180 amps from the main and 60 amps from the solar equals 240. An easy way to increase the system size of solar on someone's home to accommodate how much power they're consuming on a month to month basis. However, we do have to be careful that at nighttime when the solar is not producing any power, that we don't consume more than 180 amps or else we could be uh, at fault that this 180 amp breaker might trip um, at times that we'd rather it not. Perhaps at 9 or 10 o'clock when a spa turns on, maybe there's a uh, sauna, electric vehicle. We just need to make sure you're not going to have a, over 180 amps uh, at one time from the utility. And that's a lot of power, so it's, it's pretty uh, abnormal in a residential case. But I do encourage you to uh, have an electrician perform load calculations to ensure that we're not going to exceed that in any case at night when the solar is not producing. So one more scenario. 100 amp main breaker. What's the biggest solar system you can produce? With overcurrent protection, the largest system we can produce, we can add to this panel is a 20 amps capacity solar system. Now you can derate as well here. We can derate this to 80 amps, assuming there's load calcs performed, which would allow you to install your 7700 watt inverter on a 100 amp panel. Thank you very much for your attention to this. Look forward to more videos regarding energy efficiency, solar, building design, and uh, the next generation of homes.